Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's the Illblurmatic, Matic, Matic, Matic. It's the illest blur in the land. Welcome back to Ill Blur. Matic, what's going on? Thank you so much for commenting, liking, subscribing, also returning. Let's get into today's new video. Today's new video is a Mortal Kombat movie review on Cage Match. So, this movie is the prequel to Scorpion's Revenge of the Mortal Kombat animated movies, meaning Mortal Kombat Legends movies, not the live one, not the hot garbage. <laughs> but let's get into it. The first thing that I thought that was really good with this movie was the voice acting. <laughs> the voice acting, Joel McHale did an excellent job voicing Johnny Cage. It was very believable when it came to the voice acting. He was very sarcastic. He was the ladies' man. He had the elements that you know Johnny Cage for within Mortal Kombat. All right. I was like, this was the perfect choice. He also was the voice for Mortal Kombat in Scorpion's Revenge. So I'm glad they kept the same voice actor <laughs> for the actual movie. So it flowed really well because he had already voiced them before in the previous Mortal Kombat movie, Scorpion's Revenge. Um... The other thing that I thought was really interesting with this film, it was a bit of an origin story movie. We saw the beginning of Johnny Cage, whether it was his acting career, <laughs> his life as a kid where he was constantly bullied, and he finally got into some classes with this Chuck Norris-like character in the movie. I was like, that's Chuck Norris. <laughs> that's Chuck Norris. <laughs> And I was like, yo, I, I love it. You know what I'm saying? The underdog finally beats up the bullies and everything. Great. <laughs> also, I have to keep in mind, this is a rated R film. I, I want people to know that too. So if you got kids, uh, you may want to watch it with them depending on the age. It's definitely a rated R movie. There is some blood and gore in it, some brutal scenes where you're like, holy crap, but it's Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat! <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of already know that it's going to give you those type of things uh, within the actual movie. Uh, the other thing that I thought was interesting with the movie was the other characters within the movie. We have Johnny Cage's assistant that's kind of similar to Johnny Cage, but he's an adult. Uh, he's kind of the cowardly guy. Uh, he does have some courage to throughout some of the film to certain scenes, uh, works. We also have Ashira, his love interest within the movie, which is this demon that wants to become human because she's tired of being a demon. Ironic. <laughs> I was like, what? Ashira from Mortal Kombat? Uh, we also do get a brief cameo of Raiden in this movie. Uh, and I think it worked. We understood that Ashira was one of the people that was fighting this other woman in the movie. <laughs> and Johnny Cage eventually goes to find out where his co-star is, and she's nowhere to be found. Um, Let's talk about the themes in this movie, and I want to talk about these themes. One of the themes is love. We know Johnny Cage is a ladies' man. His love interest is, after all, a Shira. There are some uh, comedy that's kind of referring to him and a Shira being an item in the movie, which I thought was downright hilarious. Like, <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> like, they, they use it in such a unique way. It's like, okay, the jokes work with it. Uh, we also, uh, the other theme in this movie is Hollywood. Very shocking. <laughs> this one right here kind of threw me for a loop. I was like, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. What that, brothers? What up, brothers? What are you doing? <laughs> uh, this theme pertains to selling your soul, uh, meaning that some celebrities, in order for them to get to a certain career in the acting world, that some of them do certain things to boost their popularity, like this secret society that's within the movie, or I should say cult society. <laughs> um, we see that some of these celebrities that Johnny Cage were very close to some of them turned on him because they wanted to have more acclaim or, or, or fame at that. And Johnny Cage wanted to, you know, have his own stardom, but he did not want to go that direction. So he was the polar opposite of some of his colleagues that was within this world. And some of them were the demons as well. So uh, it was interesting um, 
approach when they went with this theme. I was like, hmm, y'all trying to tell us something. Y'all trying to tell us something. Uh, I did like the aspect that Johnny Cage did not want to follow the same path as some of these other people well-known in the Hollywood scene. And we see why they didn't really live up to what they were supposed to because they pretty much sell their soul to be a certain type of way to get the success that they wanted by, you know, being a part of this secret society. Um, the other theme in this movie <laughs> pretty much is setting up Johnny Cage's success. Him learning how to get back up and fight again. I love how they use another famous Mortal Kombat villain. I don't want to spoil it for you guys, but there's another uh, character in this movie that is a popular uh, Mortal Kombat villain. This is Spider-Man. Mortal Kombat villain, excuse me. Uh, and it works. I was like, okay, this is a great way to go about it. Um, the other thing that worked with this movie was the action and comedy. They brought the action. They brought the comedy. And it worked. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't overly comedy. Like, it was like, ah, oh, man, they're doing too much. Uh, the action, it felt like a Mortal Kombat game. We have the S-Ray. <laughs> That's incorporated in Mortal Kombat, where you see the scenes where the face getting smashed up, the skull getting smashed up, the jaw. I was like, this is Mortal Kombat. <laughs> um, overall, I like even how this movie ended. I, I have to say... Uh, we see the characters go on, certain characters within the movie, and the paths change and where they go. We see Johnny Cage become more successful after the certain thing that took place within this movie. Uh, we see his assistant kind of have a different change as well with his life. Uh, we even see Ashira, his love interest, go through a different change. So um, overall, I was impressed with this movie. Because I was worried. I was like, man, they, they really doing good with these Mortal Kombat Legend anime movies. I was like, Wonder Brothers, y'all sure y'all want to do it for a sequel? Do y'all really want to do it? <laughs> um, also, what I enjoyed about the movie had 80s vibe. It, it definitely, the color scheme for this movie, for it to be an anime movie, definitely 80s vibe. I love how they made Johnny Cage look 80s like in this movie. Uh, and it definitely worked. Also, like I said, the, the music, the animation, good. Uh, but let's get to the actual review. So, um, for me, Mortal Kombat Legends cage match, I have to give it an A minus. It is definitely impressive. I, I was like, it blew me away. It kept my interest. Um, I didn't grow bored with this movie. Uh, I like the themes that they incorporated in this movie. The voice casting was really well thought of. Uh, but you guys tell me in the comments, have you seen Mortal Kombat Cage Match pretty much setting up Johnny Cage's story? You tell me in the comments, guys. And also, would you like to see a Mortal Kombat Legends 5? Because honestly, I think in, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, they're setting this up for a fifth movie. Probably with another Mortal Kombat character, guys. But you tell me in the comments, guys. It's a blur living in the world. Thanks so much for commenting, liking, subscribing, and fully watching the video, guys. I'm out. <laughs>